Hello everyone, MasterZeon101 here, and in this video we'll be going over just kind of the fundamentals of design magic and how you can approach it as a hard ops user and just kind of get the most out of your experience. Design magic was produced by Chip Walters, which you can pick up over on Blender Market or Gumroad links in the description. And basically it allows you to voxelize your meshes on the fly, which can result in a rather interesting workflow. So over the course of this video, I just want to talk about it in relation with hard ops and how you can just get the most out of your experience. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So when you first have Metashape installed, it adds a Design Magic T-Panel that you're able to access as shown. The basic thing about it is when you go into it, you're able to basically click to add a Metashape and then you click less in order to reduce your geometry and you click more in order to add more geometry. Of course, you can also find settings in between. For example, I might want to be at this particular voxel size, but I want to up my smooth to something like 50 in order to make it more rounded. I'm able to do that by having that sort of versatility. Uh, comparatively, this is like an alternative, I feel, to using the bevel modifier where you just have a shape and you add a bevel modifier and you're dealing with the edges. Instead, in Design Magic, you can just have that dealt with in the form of voxels being added topologically. So one of the benefits of this is that if we were to say take a shape like a cube and we take a cylinder and we bring it out Let's just take this back face and we'll press Control B and bevel this just to make it nice and rounded. We can take both of these shapes, union them together, and then when we add a meta shape, it'll basically deal with the transitional union between these two pieces as well by improving it via voxelization. So we can get in and like I said, we can set things to more and find just that right sweet point of the amount of topology that we want and the amount of smoothness that we want. And then of course, adjust our smoothness accordingly. For example, I may want 100 in order to keep more of the parameter, or I may want to just go less in order to reduce the amount of topology and then increase my smoothness to something like 100 in order to get an even more rounded surface. So when it comes to hard ops and box cutter, underneath the behavior options, we do have sort for remesh. And you can see in my case that I actually have remesh sort disabled because that means that if we were to begin cutting, we would begin placing shapes before the remesh and it'll just get hairy. So to show what that looks like, let's enable remesh and let's just begin drawing a box. Let's get out of view though. And we see that there's now a bit of a disaster and that's because our Boolean is getting placed before the smooth, but not before the remesh, which is causing a bit of an issue. So for these reasons, I definitely recommend working without remesh sorting being enabled until that's actually addressed. But for the most part, when it comes to dealing with modifiers like this, I always look at them as like constructive modifiers, meaning that when you add stuff onto it, it should just append it to the end because these three are basically considered part of a separate process to the hard ops workflow and thus shouldn't have any special sorting dealt with. Uh, kit ops is a different story. So from the sides, I'm just cutting some pieces off and then we can just mirror it to the other side. So even though this shape is created out of uh, basically voxelization, by cutting we can actually bring a little bit of sanity back to our form and get some special control for it as far as detailing this to a higher level. So Chip does have quite a few videos discussing this topic uh, in depth and also on the sales page, there's quite a few videos actually talking about how he actually uses design magic. But for this, I'm actually des describing the method in which I approach this tool. So I'm going to take this moment and shift click Smart Apply in order to create a duplicate and we're gonna just grab this area, uh, inset it, press Control I and delete everything else so we have only that face. And from here, we're just gonna solidify it, but I'll press two. So that way we push it both ways instead of one way. And we could just select both and perform a difference. And so far so good. So if we press Alt V and we look at the wireframe, we see that we're doing a pretty good job of mitigating ourselves away from trouble areas because the amount of distance we see in the topology between here and here is gonna determine where our bevel's gonna go. And if we wanna go anywhere past that, we're gonna to have to kind of eat this geometry for lunch at, as in use a weld modifier. So to show this in action, I'm going to just click bevel to add a bevel. And we see that the bevel is already not getting very far because of the topology involved. So that's one of the things about 
working in high poly. But let's go under add modifier and we'll add a weld, which right now the weld is after the bevel, so I'm just going to roll it a little bit just to eat the bevel for lunch, just have a little fun with it. And then we can shift scroll, roll it up the list in order to actually eat it in the proper order. So we want to weld the geometry before we actually get to the bevel basically giving us a much smoother result. Let's alt click sharpen, which will give us a weighted normal. And if we turn off wireframe, we see that we're able to get a pretty nice looking mesh with us just playing with some voxelization. And the best part is we could still just click on less and more in order to adjust our resolution and just get whatever settings we need for it because we're still in the middle of a modifier stack. But of course, keep in mind that the higher you go, the more troublesome it's going to get with your geometry. And with certain angles, it is going to get caught by the angle bevel modifier. So keep that in mind as well. Because we're working non-destructively, we're at the mercy of the angles that we have created. So I'm going to press D, we'll switch over to box, and I'm just going to draw a box on the side. And this mesh is already getting pretty dense in the modifier stack, meaning that, you know, whenever we start cutting, performance is also going to take a small hit. But we see that with these cuts, we're able to kind of get away with things, except for this particular area where we weren't able to get away with it. If we press Alt-V, we can look at our wireframe, and we see that if we basically do an ever-scroll recall of our last cutter, we can select just this top face, move it down, and then we don't have to get in and deal with our other modifier settings. But we do see that the weld is getting a little bit forgotten, which is also good. We want our weld to retain its area. But in this case, we actually want to move it down the stack just to ensure that we're giving it its best. And we see that we probably need to get in and look at the bevel. And we see that what's happening is this particular edge is overshooting this particular edge. So there's a couple of ways we can actually go about this. We could either lower our bevel in order to accommodate this particular area, or my favorite is compromising on the positioning of the cutter in order to keep the area. So for this, we already were trying to get away with a rather large wedge. So let's just press GX, move it over to something a little more isolated. And the added benefit is we could even increase the size of our bevel just kind of going forward. And so even though this is a highly uh, voxelized shape, we're still able to kind of get some work done with it. So just because we're voxelizing it doesn't mean it's the end of days. I can just continue adding parts, putting pebbles on it, getting additional details in here, and we're just going to jump off the center, cut it out, also give that a slice. And in the alt M, we can just alt click blank material to give this an emissive material. And with all of these pieces, let's just control click blank material to give everything a unique material. If we jump over to rendering, we can actually see what our result looks like. So just a really quick overview of how I use design magic. And hopefully you should already be able to see kind of the benefits it has for the workflow for getting these really smooth um, shapes that tell their own story. So with that, let's move on to the next section. So whenever it comes to design magic and its relationship with hard ops, I feel it's pretty basic, but just to uh, go into it in a little more depth and show an example is this is what the T panel looks like for design magic. It's rather basic. So I'm going to tap into edit mode and we're just going to select this one edge and just control click mark in order to bevel this one edge. And I will just alt X mirror to the other side while holding shift, we'll click this side. And then without holding shift, I'll click the other side, just allowing it to go to all sides. We'll press QOT in order to go from Q to operations and to shape. And in this, we will just press spacebar to choose cylinder and hold control and scroll to place it on the offset of Z minus. And from here, we can press A in order to adjust our cylinder and make it bigger. We could also press one, two, three at the top in order to give it more segments. We'll go with 64. And so I'm just gonna bring this shape up and we're gonna take this shape and this shape, press Q, and just perform a union. So now these two shapes have been unioned together and we see that we utilize fast in order to do it. So I'm just gonna press Q and sharpen it. We see that our cutter also needs a degree of sharpening. So let's bring it back and under operations, we're just gonna sharp it. So that way it's also nicely shaded. So at this point, I'm gonna shift click smart apply in order to duplicate the shape off to the side just as a clone. So that way we can talk about design magic and how it differs in a bit with hops. So if we click on add meta shape, we're basically adding the shape. And if we look at our modifier stack, we see that it's pretty basic. It still kept the initial boolean we set up. It set up a remash, put a smooth afterwards. We have these options of less and more in order to add more and less resolution. 
So we could press Alt V and turn on wireframe in order to look at the wireframe that we're being given. And we see that this mesh is definitely a little heavy on some of the smoother ones where it's tight, but I like to find a nice balance where it's pretty simple. And we can press Alt V, turn wireframe back off. And so just looking at this mesh with box cutter active, we're just going to perform a cut up here, perform a cut on the side, just begin kind of leveling this shape off. We can see that because of the heaviness of the mesh, performance is definitely impacted. So you could also go to the top bar and just turn on pause mode just to work in a moment and pause, which if you have solid shades showing, you can actually see like a penetrative display of your mesh interacting, which is perfect for pause. You know, there's no shame in having to use pause because geometry is a little heavy, which we can always adjust by clicking the less and more outside of this. But with us having our shape set up, we're just gonna click and apply and that's done. So with this selected, we're just gonna alt X, mirror to the other side, while holding shift in order to keep it up. So that way we can just mirror it to the other side of that. We'll press Alt V, E in order to go to EVHQ and we're pretty much on our way to our final conclusion. Because of the cuts that we've done, we've created some flat areas and because of these flat areas, that means that we can actually play off of them. So if I shift click Smart Apply, we're making a Smart Apply clone similar to how we got our first duplicate that was applied. And I'm just going to inset this piece and delete everything else that's irrelated. And even though this is a pretty high mesh, we see that I'm still able to do the same tricks that I'm doing in my traditional content as far as mirroring pieces on the other side, doing insets and clones. So now that we've mirrored it inside of edit mode, I just alt scrolled over to symmetry while in mirror in order to symmetrize it. And with that, we can go under our Q menu and add a solidify. We wanna push it both ways with the number two. If we select both of them, give it a difference. We're now looking at a shape similar to this. So what I also want to do is place a circle in here. So what I'm going to do is select this edge and we're just going to right click and subdivide. And that gives us this single solitary point. And the reason that we're doing that is so that whenever I hold control with snap dots, we have that point. And I'm just going to use the box helper to switch over to circle. And we're just going to draw a circle space bar to just quickly apply. We could actually turn live mode back on unless it's like super slow like we're seeing here. You know, slow down issues are bound to happen whenever you're working with really high poly geometry, which is why, you know, smartly slicing and separating geometry and keeping things kind of quartered to regions whenever you're working is always smart. So I'm just moving the mouse to adjust my bevel. And for a minute, I was thinking it wasn't even going to adjust, but we press spacebar and we've adjusted that, but we see that the shading is getting off. So I'm just gonna go and control tilde and we'll click on 30 to set our auto smooth to 30. And let's press Alt V and look at this without the wireframe display. And this is basically the result of me just getting in and just quickly playing with meta shape. So we could always give it less if we want by clicking the less button and we can always give it more by clicking the more button because the modifier is still active. So even though we're using this with hard ops and all these other modifiers stacked on top, we're still able to get some play with this. So just letting you know that you still have a bit of flexibility. In fact, as far as uh, bevel's concerned, let's add a bevel. And we don't want it to be too big, but we also want to accompany it with a weighted normal by alt clicking sharpen and we see that we were able to get a pretty good looking result. If we press Alt V and we look at the wireframe, we see that I don't even have to talk about using weld today. Maybe a little bit of weld, you know, let's say you're a perfectionist and you really care about this. Well, I'm just going to go under weld, add a weld, but I'm gonna shift scroll it up above angle. And let's just roll the wheel just a little bit until it's clean. And we'll press Alt V, get out of wireframe. And this is basically our result for just playing with meta shape. Previously, we duplicated this mesh off onto the side, so now we can talk about it. So this mesh just has the modifiers already applied. We're just looking around with Alt Z just to make sure there's not any interior faces because that'll always ruin my day. And if we look at our edges, we have these guidance edges that are a bit of a concern. Also, let's go ahead and bring this up. And our guidance edges are connected kind of haphazardly, meaning that if we get in and add a bevel, it might work out. In fact, 
This time it makes a fool of me by looking very nice and working out, but let's press alt X and instead we're just going to symmetrize from this side to this side, getting rid of that line that was here. And so now we're going to symmetrize from this side to this side, getting rid of these lines. So we click that and we see that we've traded our lines for perfectly nice middle lines. So just showing how we would deal with adding these very large bevels in terms of hard ops. Right now we're actually working using an angle workflow. So if we look at it in edit mode, we see that we have some additional markings that aren't going to work for us when we switch over to weight. So we, let's just switch over to weight. I'm just going to go in bevel and press L and we see that things are looking a bit tragic. So let's resharpen it. If we look at the tooltip, we see that control shift is resharpen. And now we've basically resharpened this object, meaning we've cleared out the previous sharps and we've calculated new sharps based on what's going on. So sometimes if you need to just recalculate, it's there for you. And the best part about working in weight is if we wanted to, we could select this top boundary, alt click mark in order to lower the maximum bevel weight for this boundary, which means that we can actually go bigger with the bevel and get satisfactory results. But we also want to do it to the bottom. Let's alt click mark, which will let us adjust the bevel weight. And from here, we now have additional levels of control when it comes to dealing with this as far as the same bevel is concerned. So selecting these two, we can just alt click mark. We're just going to bring this into 0.5. So basically half of what the global bevel is. And let's just roll the wheel, see what we're getting. Press one to adjust our profile. And we see that we were able to get a somewhat interesting shape. However, we are fighting with matters of shading. So if we wanted to not fight with the shading at this point, which I can tell you now that it's better that we just continue working and come back to it. But if we wanted to, we could select everything, press control E and just clear the marking for sharp edges. And we see that now the shading's perfect. However, let's undo and put it back where it was. And let's all click weighted normal and we see that weighted normal wasn't able to mitigate that. So continuing on, I am going to just keep working. So I'm just going to control shift click bevel to add a new bevel and we'll just press X to drop it at half of what it was because we can't see it. But now we have two bevels and whenever we perform this cut, we're now cutting on the second level of bevel. And we see that even at half, it wasn't able to work out because of the size of this bevel. This bevel is actually bigger than we're looking at with this edge. We probably should have manually adjusted it, but really what matters now is finishing this cut. And then we could just press Q, go under bevel and bring it down to something reasonable. Press one to adjust the smoothing. Maybe alt click sharpen and put away at normal at this point. And we could just alt X, press X, mirror this to the other side. And from here, I'm just going to shift click on smart apply to get my clone. We see that it nicely omitted the last bevel, which is what I want for a clone. Sometimes that aspect works against us, but the lore of smart apply is definitely under consideration at this time. So we see that one side doesn't look exactly the same. So let's just mirror it. We see that this entire mesh doesn't look like the other side. So let's just mirror that. And selecting this and this, we're just going to perform a difference. And we could just lower the bevel. Let's bring this shape back. And we'll do the same trick as before, where I just place a single vertice on this edge by subdividing it. And then I can use that as a jump off point for the circle. So sometimes I just create my own points to jump off of when it comes to snapping because it is that versatile. And with that, we've actually created our next shape. So I just wanted to demonstrate just kind of how I would go about fighting this shape on the hard op side, and also how I would approach doing it with um, design magic, which, you know, is fairly basic. So there shouldn't have to be a lot of understanding that's needing to be conveyed. I mean, modifier awareness is important. So in wrapping up, let's put these two shapes to work. So I'm just going to shift A, add a plane, and I'm going to press Alt X and Alt scroll until I get to bisect, which is split the mesh in half and delete the other half. And we're going to keep only half on the X for this plane. And from here, I can just click on screw, which will screw it. And we see that this plane normals for everything. 
but after clicking, we see that we've received our intended result. I'm going to take this shape and move it over to the side, but we see that things just don't work out for that. So if I press Q and we go to late parent, we see that now everything is parented to it and we can move the shape over. So because the shape is a non-destructive solenoid type piece, that means that I can select just one point and control click mark in order to bevel. It also means I can shift P and scroll through all the custom profiles that are built into this latest version of hard ops until I find one I like. I always try to go with a different one each time, but man, I got some in here that I just love. In fact, it's always the intricate ones that I love. Let's shift click sharpen just to give it a little extra uh, smoothing to it by adjusting the auto smooth. And for the screw, let's actually raise the amount of segments from 36 to uh, 64. I know, a lot of segments today. And with this shape, we can just Alt X, modifier mirror it to the other side. And we're going to switch over to circle. And because we have dots enabled, that means that there's a point in the center that I can jump off of. However, we see that the scale came into consideration whenever it came to us doing that maneuver. So we will need to go back in bevel and just readdress what we're about to do with these circles. So maybe that is actually the proper size, but always make sure your scale is in check. If not, you can always uncheck apply scale in the box cutter behavior panel. So after performing that cut, we see this on the other side. With this shape, we can press RX, RX90, press Alt-G, and this shape we will just scale down. And for this one, let's Alt-G. One of the benefits of dealing with all of it through hops was, um, you know, all the auto parenting stuff that was able to be done on the fly resulting in us making very short work of things. Also at this point, we probably do want to address these uh, edges. We can get rid of those by just going in control E and we will just clear the sharp markings just for this particular mesh because we got what we we're going for. In fact, with it looking like this in the back, I'm just going to draw a cut, press T in order to give it solidification, give it a separation. And we see that the scale situation of us rescaling everything to fit also affected our bevel. So we will just get in the back and make a few adjustments. And with our piece in the front, we could always just click more if we want to add more detail to this, but we could also give it less. So in terms of how this tool works, Chip definitely has a lot of information about it on his channel. But one of the things I do want to talk about is if we tap into edit mode, we see that we got a pretty rudimentary cylinder. So I am going to go under modifiers and I'm going to alt click subdivision. And that's going to send a subdivision modifier directly up the stack. And by shifting it to live, we can go in edit mode and just toggle off mark, which basically eliminates the rest of the bevel. So with this piece, we can see some shading issues happening and let's talk about their mitigation. But also just for fun, let's talk about take, turning this into a meta shape. Let's try that again. And we see that that one was a little bit harsh. Let's try that again. We look at our shape to see, okay, what it is is that we never split the mesh. We put a solidify as a cutter. And what we want to do is actually shift that bowl to be a slice. So let's actually try that again. First, I'm going to save this as a solenoid. And let's select this piece and we're just going to add meta shape. Sometimes I wonder if I actually clicked it and I'm waiting or if I need to wait or if I need to click it again and I'm, I'm going to add a meta shape a second time, but uh, maybe that's just me. So sometimes you you know your limit because you click more and you're you're waiting on it and that's when you know you done goofed and you went one step too far. You know, sometimes it looks pretty much all right. And then you just decide to go one more step of more. And then that's when you really feel that performance hit. So let's press Alt V and look at it. Besides the faceting that's happening at this phase, let's press Alt V and look at the wireframe. We see that the wireframe is just overkill. We have so much wireframe, but our shape doesn't have the resolution to be able to take this. So let's take our screw and actually jump it up to 128 and see if we can actually mitigate it. 
128 is a mad lad resolution, but we see that it did let us get a little bit farther with this particular shape. So let's have some fun with it. I'm going to just draw a cutter, press X, and because of how heavy poly things are, I can just tell you that it's going to get hairy. Definitely hairy. We'll take a moment. So I actually paused it for a moment and now I'm unpausing it to say that I paused it for a moment and I'm still waiting on this thing. So, you know, whenever you get to these heavy poly scenarios, definitely take into consideration that Boolean rules apply, that if you're cutting a mesh that's just way too heavy, you're gonna pay the cost with time. And shortly after I said that and paused it, it became fine again. So with this piece, I'm gonna just jump to less immediately because that's just too much. Let's press Alt V, look at our wireframe resolution. Let's choose less some more. <laughs> less some more. All right, let's actually jump up to a little bit of more. And with this one, let's look at it. And we definitely want to give it less. And so let's say we wanted to actually promote this piece to a bevel. You know, let's look at it. The amount of topology between this and the edge is about how much bevel we're going to get on this mesh. So I'm going to control click bevel. And it's definitely going to be a little bit performance heavy. Also going to have to hold shift in order to move it gently like a butterfly in a pond. All right, Alt V, let's look at the wireframe. And so now we have a nice bevel happening between these shapes. Let's try to do the same thing to this. Let's look at our wireframe. We could go with a little bit of less. However, this topology is just going to work us. So let's just go to more and let's just add a bevel. Regrettable, I know. But I'm just gonna roll the wheel to reduce the amount of segments and try to find that nice medium. Obviously having to get very close and hold shift because poly counts are a little high. You know, if Blender was Superman, polygons would be its kryptonite. Just throw a few polygons at Superman, uh, Lex Luthor, and he would be out of here. So I wanna actually go to the last bevel in line, this one, and let's just type in 0 0.02, so we start with. I'm gonna take this, divide it by two. Sometimes you just gotta get out and deal with things manually. Let's just shift click sharpen. And that's gonna automatically allow us to get the auto smooth down to something more reasonable. So whatever's causing that, I don't even wanna know. I'm just gonna alt click weight at normal because I don't wanna know. And let's come back out. And this is what we're looking at so far. So obviously the more that we try to cut into the shape, the more it's going to give us a little bit of the business because of the high polygon counts. But I did want to at least take these pieces and turn them into something practical. I mean, at the end, I could just press alt M control click blank material to give these a blank material. Let's just jump over to our render. And just having heavy polys is always going to make it hurt. There we go, now I'm able to rotate my view. And let's just control click bevel on this piece because we're gonna need some sort of extra detail to really give some extra oomph to this. So we look at our back, we look at our front, and I'm gonna press Q, add camera, and we'll just scale up our camera, get it positioned. Let's press Alt V B in order to just scroll some blank lights till we just get something that we can get started with. And from here, Alt V V, and we're just gonna press S and cycle through the environments until we find one that we want. We could also press V to just turn off the visualization of the background environment while we find the right one. I actually think I like that one. Let's turn off our resolution and we could just let this 360 play us out. Of course, with this big naked side, we can take a moment to press W to exit box cutter, press D. And if you're using the 202 decals, this would be a good opportunity for us to go in and pick a decal to start from. Usually I slap a big cube on it just to let people know, hey, this thing started from a cube, bro. Um, in a way, it did start from a cube. so. Let's just take our cube and we're just going to slap it on the side, press D, project, 
and we see that we're able to project this decal very nicely onto this meta shape. And from here, I'm just going to adjust the metallicity, lower the roughness, and we see that there's still some edges peeking through. So I'm gonna to need to go under my displacement and just work the strength. And we could also go in and add another decal, which in this case, I'm gonna choose these stripes. And we're gonna place these on the center, D, project. And I'm just gonna to go to the modifier and adjust the strength of it, giving us a near final result. Uh, we could also take this moment to press D, talk about the Mr. Rad tools, which are some of my favorite decals whenever it comes to bolts. They're just my go-to. He put so much care into some of these bolts. Some of them are a little more of a ponderance, but his classic bolts, I don't know. Just something about them speaks to me. We'll slap a few of these on this meta shape. Modifier. And we see that this one also needs us to possibly go in and affect the displace modifier just a little bit. Just a little extra detail to be added. Let's look at the back. And we could also take a moment to rad it up. Now we're going to his classic pack, which I feel are a little bit more experimental than the second one, which was a little bit more formal, but still does the job. And some great decals in each pack. We'll increase the displace amount and I'm going to just modify our mirror to the other side, giving us this as our result. We can rat it up one more time. This time I'm gonna go into his level two kit. They're not even levels. Uh, I think they're just, they were released in that order, but I always look at them like levels when I'm using them. So for this one, I'm just going to adjust the displace as well. And we just wanna do a four way mirror We want to select this and this and make sure that we click the handle and not accidentally select the decal underneath. And the final mirror is mirroring it on the Z, basically reducing our work a dramatic amount, giving us this as a pretty nice final result. So I'm going to press zero and look at things from the camera view. And we're almost done. I'm going to select this piece in the middle because it looks like it's the lowest down. And if I press QOT, we can add a cylinder, but I don't want a cylinder, I actually want a plane. And we can just press A in order to adjust the scale, but I'm just gonna click and apply, so that way I can come out and just grab it. And we could just scale it up and slap blank materials on it with Alt-M, just wrapping this up. So this is basically our final result of just playing with a little bit of design magic in the context of just making a quick solenoid piece, it, but also talking about some of the fundamentals of hard ops and working with shapes. And that is it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.